Hey, what's up? Pizza Loving Nerd here. This is the Librem 5. Yes, it's finally here. If this device wouldn't have been announced, I would have never bought my Pine Phone. In my opinion, this is the device that kinda started to get people paying attention to the Linux phone world. However, after countless delays, I finally have one. If you're wondering how I got one, it's kinda complicated. Peerism did not directly send it to me. However, the YouTuber Hackers Game, you might know him for some of his Librem 5 development progress videos, he held a giveaway a while ago, and the winner never responded. So, that giveaway unit made its way to me. I think my review will be pretty good because this is coming from someone who doesn't show purism like a lot of the other Linux YouTubers who own one of these does. I'm not talking about anyone in particular, by the way. And on top of that, I still know what I'm talking about when it comes to Linux smartphones because of all the videos I've done on the Pine Phone. So I'm not going to be coming into it with a blind eye like some of the reviewers are. Specifically, the make use of review for the Librem 5 is really bad, no offense. <laughs> so let's get to the unboxing. But first, roll the intro. In the box, we have a quick start guide, followed by the phone itself. And then under the phone, we have some earbuds, which surprised me. It's been a while since I've gotten a phone with earbuds. A USB-C power cord, a power brick, and some adapters for the power brick to use on the other side of the world if you're not in America. Not the fanciest packaging, but not the worst packaging either. Now, let's get to the full review. In terms of build quality, it is really thick and heavy. Now, the thickness, it I don't really care about the thickness that much. It feels fine in the hand, but the heaviness does throw me off. I'm used to pretty light phones, like the Pine Phone is actually pretty light in comparison. And here's a thickness comparison between the Pine Phone right here and the Librem 5. The Librem 5 is a little bit thicker. Kind of reminds me of an iPhone 4 in design because it has more of a square design than the Pine Phone has. I guess it's technically rounded, but the bezels make it feel more square in the hand. I wish it was a bit lighter, but I'm fine with the thickness. Another benefit of this phone is the back does come off. And right here, you can remove the battery if you want to. I'm not going to do it because then I'd have to reboot the phone and everything because I would like to show off some of the software features. And if you unscrew some of these screws here, you have access to the modem or the Wi-Fi card and you can actually swap it out, which is a pretty cool feature. It's kind of modular for some of the parts of the phone. One thing I'd like to see Purism do is Pine64 has all of the parts to the Pine Phone that you might want for repair on their website, and Purism, not so much. So, Purism, that's something I'd recommend doing. Now, on the side right here, you have hardware kill switches. Now, these kill switches are awesome because this isn't software. This physically disconnects all of these components from the board. So, you got camera and microphone right here, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and then cellular data. So if I don't want cellular data, for example, flip that down, boom. Now technically the Pine Phone does have this too. However, in order to access it on the Pine Phone, you have to open the backup and then use something like a thumbtack to flip these really small switches right here. So I think in terms of the accessibility of the kill switches, I like how easy they are to access on the Librem 5. Now let's talk about performance. I'm actually really impressed by how smooth things are on the Librem 5. There is no stuttering between any of the animations on Fosh. Apps open pretty quickly, like I wouldn't say as fast as like a flagship iPhone or Android phone, but it can definitely compete with a mid-range Android phone. And websites load pretty quickly in Firefox, although I couldn't really say the same for Gnome Web. In terms of other software related things, the camera still needs a bit of work because it is using an older version of megapixels, which doesn't have things such as autofocus or GTK4 for video acceleration. However, I really like PureOS on the Librem 5. PureOS on the Pine Phone was actually my favorite distribution on the Pine Phone, but unfortunately it's not maintained anymore on the Pine Phone, which kind of stinks, but on the Librem 5 it's just as good if not better as I remember it. Now. So far, it seems like I'm just showing on Purism like a lot of the other YouTubers are doing. However, this phone does have some major problems to me. One is price. 
I'm honestly fine with the $800 price for this phone. Purism not only had to build their own hardware from scratch, but they're building software too, and that is intensely difficult considering that they picked GTK for the stack, and before the Librem 5, GTK had no mobile Linux support at all. I mean, technically it could run, but it didn't have any adaptive components or anything, so you'd have to make separate apps for everything, and LibHandy has really helped the Linux mobile ecosystem. So because of the software and hardware development that Purism is doing, I honestly think $800 is a fair price for this phone. However, with the chip shortage, it's currently selling for $900, which, yeah, that, that sucks. You know, there's a chip shortage, there's nothing they can really do there if they want to keep selling it. But now, in November 1st, they're going to raise it to $1,200, and then in March 2022, it's going to be $1,300. I'm sorry, but no one's gonna adopt Linux Mobile if they have to shell out $1,200 or $1,300 for a phone that can run it. This to me is part of why the Pine Phone is so beneficial to the Linux Mobile ecosystem. It's so cheap, anyone who wants one can get one basically. Another issue I'm having with the Librem 5 is battery life. The battery life on this feels like the Pine Phone Braveheart when I first got it. However, later down the line, the PinePhone's Linux distros implemented something called Crust Deep Sleep, which extended the battery life significantly. And the Librem 5, I don't think it has something like this, because despite having a bigger battery, I'm getting about half the battery life I'd get on a PinePhone. I do not think the battery life on this is even close to me being able to get a full day with it, whereas the PinePhone, I could get a full day with it. And lastly, the heating on this is a little bit worrying. Now, what's weird about the heating issues is they are kind of inconsistent. When I first got the phone and I was messing around with it, it got really hot to the point where I had to put it down because I was worried it would get too hot and burn my hand. Now, I haven't had an incident like that since that one time. However, it does get a little bit hotter than the Pine Phone, and the Pine Phone gets pretty hot, so that kind of worries me. So, would I recommend this phone? I feel like with the Pine Phone, it's really easy to recommend given its price point, and the fact that this isn't really meant to be daily drove. It's pretty much a toy. The thing is though, because the Librem 5 is so expensive, if you just want to tinker around with a Linux phone, I wouldn't recommend it for tinkering around or anything because of that price point. If you want a good toy, the Pine Phone's a much better option. In terms of daily drivability though, this phone is so much more smooth compared to the Pine Phone that I think this is a good option if you don't care about how much it does cost because it is very expensive right now. This does need a tiny bit more work on the software. I feel like the camera app needs some work and the battery life needs some work. They should implement something like what the Pine Phone did with Crest Deep Sleep. However, with some software stuff ironed out, this is actually a really good option and actually it could be something that can be daily driven. So, Purism, if you need something to improve, focus more on the camera and the battery life. Those, to me, are my biggest two priorities because the app support on Fosh now isn't actually that bad, so yeah. Anyways, that's the video. Thanks to my patrons, Mario Scripsguard, Jim Peter, Jan Sass, Frank, Tech Hut, SBCB16, Sam Covet, and Mitchell Vantino. The support really helps and allows me to make more videos like this one. So, thank you and see ya.